Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mike Hermes at MH Tutorials, and today we're going to do another subscriber request. Okay. Now the question that I got was, can you do a sci-fi tutorial? Now I just uh, finished uh, how to model a spaceship. Today we're going to create a liquid radioactive hand grenade. Okay. So let's see what we can set up here. All right. So we're going to start off in our polygons menu and we're going to go up to create polygon primitive and we're going to go down to helix like so. We're going to left click and drag and we're going to pull that up. All right. Then we're going to go to our polyhelix tab and we're going to increase the uh, subdivision axis to 40 to make that nice and round and we're going to leave that 50 as is. Okay. I am going to increase the number of coils to, let's say, let's see how that looks. That looks about right. Okay. And what we're going to do next is we're going to select that guy, hit R, and we're going to stretch that out just a little bit. Okay. So we get these kind of, I'll hit 5 for shaded mode, kind of flattened sides like ribs or something like that. Okay. All right, now that we got that, select that thing. We're going to go to our polyhelix tab and we're going to set all translate values to zero to get that thing nice and central. Okay. Then we're going to go up and create a polygon pipe. We're going to select that. We're going to drag that out in the grid. We're going to pull that up. And let's add some subdivision to that to make it nice and round. So poly pipe tab. Let's go with 40. And there's no need to uh, increase height and so forth. Let's make this 60. I want to make sure it's absolutely nice and round. Okay. We're going to select that again. And go to our polypipe tab. Again, set the translate values to zero. So it's nice and round and centered. We maybe need to scale it out a little bit. So we're going to hit R and we're going to scale that to something like that. And from this view, make sure that it's stretched out enough so all the whole helix is covered in the uh, in the pipe. Okay. So that looks all right. Cool. Let's see about the thickness. Um, maybe we need to make that a bit thinner. Let's go with 0.2. That's a bit better. All right. Okay. So we got that. And now we're going to create some caps for that. So we're going to create a polygon uh, cylinder. We're going to drag that out in the grid, pull that up, give it some subdivision to make it nice and round. Let's say 40. Uh, in height, I want 4. And for caps, I want 4 as well. Okay. So we're going to select that. We're going to go to our poly cylinder tab. Set all translated values to zero again. Hit W and pull that up. And let's just make sure that it's positioned correctly. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up to the extent that the start of my helix is covered by the cap. So this this start here, right? I don't want that to be visible, so I'm going to pull that down to that level there. All right. And maybe you can hit R and scale it out just a little bit so it's a bit thicker, like so. All right? Cool. Okay, so what's next? What we're going to do is we are going to start off by beveling this edge. So right click, edge, double click on that, edit mesh, and bevel. Okay? And we're just going to leave it like that. Okay? Then we're going to repeat that with the top edge. Edit mesh and bevel. All right. Cool. We are now going to take these faces here. So right click, face, one, two, three, four. Okay. And we're going to skip one. And we're just going to go around like that. Okay. I'll try to do it quick. So 
just to bear with me guys, I got something going on here for some reason. I don't want that. We're getting closer. Okay, so we got that, okay, edit mesh, extrude, hit R, and just scale that out, something like that. And now we're going to take the green handle and we're going to pull that down like so. Okay, which will give us something like that. All right. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to select these faces here, edit mesh, extrude, hit W and pull that down like so, okay, and then right click edge, double click on that edge, edit mesh and bevel, all right. Okay, so now we're going to create a polygon torus and we're going to create that to make a rubber ring. We're going to go to our poly torus tab. Uh, we're going to increase subdivisions to 40 like so. Set our translate values to zero. There we go. And hit W and pull that up. Hit F to zoom in. So we get a sense of where we're at. Okay, we're going to hit R. We're going to scale that in. We're going to hit W. We're going to pull that down a bit. Back to our perspective view. Let's see what we got. Okay, we're going to hit R. We're going to scale that a bit more. Something like that. Okay. And then we're going to take another uh, polygon cylinder, pull that out, pull that up, give it some subdivision, let's say 40, something like that. And we are going to add um, some caps, let's say three. Yeah, three, that's fine. Okay, we're going to set our Object mode, come on. Yep, we're going to set our uh, translate values to zero again. There we go. Hit W. Where'd he go? In here. Hit W. Pull that up. Five for shaded mode. Okay. We're going to hit R. We're going to scale it in to make that nice and flat something like that we're gonna set it on top of the rubber ring so hit f to zoom in pull that down like so this looks okay all right we're gonna bevel that top edge so right click edge double click on that edit mesh and bevel like so we're going to select these faces here, edit mesh, extrude, hit W, pull that up a little bit, and we're going to right click edge, select that edge row, and select the inner edge row, and edit mesh and bevel. Okay. Okay, so that is what we were looking for. All right. Now we are going to select this, this, hang on, object mode, that, that, and that, mesh combine, control D to duplicate, and W to pull down, like so, and we're going to hit E to flip that over by exactly minus 180 degrees okay 
we're going to hit W, we're going to pull that up. We're going to check that from this view here, hit F. And again, I want to make sure that I don't see the start of my helix. So go to Modify Center Pivot, like that, OK? And now while we've got this selected, we're going to go to Mesh and Separate because I want a little bit of different look and feel uh, either on the bottom or on the top. Let's do, let's do it at this end, OK? So we're going to uh, separate that as well. Mesh, separate. I'm going to take that and that. And I'm only going to do that part on this end. Here, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to add an image there. OK, OK, so this is the basic shape. Um, for now, just to get it in position, I'm just going to drag select it, mesh combine, pull that up on the grid. Let's just check that. That looks about right. OK. All right. Now let's start setting up some materials, lighting and so forth. OK. I'm going to start off with the ground plane. I'm just going to drag that out and get that into position. Something like that. OK. And we are going to uh, start by selecting our helix. So we're going to hit 4 for wireframe mode. Oops. Let's get that guy. Mesh separate. Try that again. There we go. Right click, assign new material. MIA underscore material X, like so. Material tab, presets, glass solid, and replace. And we're going to go to the color tab and we're going to make that green. And let's do something like that and you know just whatever you think is uh, is okay all right and we'll do a quick uh, render later okay we're going to take the outer shell here right click assign new material we're going to select the same material and the only thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh let's see this tab here, make sure that's absolutely white. Looks good. OK. I'm just going to hit 5 for shaded mode so I can see a bit better. OK. I'm going to take that part and that part and that part. So not the ring. OK. Right click, assign new material. Same material, presets, chrome, replace. And then I'm going to get that ring. And we'll see that a bit better when we have it positioned. OK. Right click, assign the material, same material, preset, rubber, replace. OK. So these are the basics so far. Now, let's set up the rest of the scene, do a quick render, and then do some tweaking. Okay. First, I want to set up some uh, image-based lighting. So I'm going to go to my render settings, select Mental Ray, because we're using Mental Ray materials. Okay. Go to Indirect Lighting, Image-Based Lighting. And while I'm at it, I'm going to select Global Illumination. Okay. OK, so I'm going to go into my folder to select my image that I want to use for this. And I got a folder where I got some uh, HDRI files. There we go. And uh, let's see, what are we going to use for this? I'm going to go with something that is not too bright. Uh, I got something here. And you know you can find these files on uh, pixels-forum.com. Yeah, there's a, a section where you can get a lot of free stuff, so uh, you can get stuff like this as well. Okay, 
So I'm going to use this, which is, uh, you know, kind of darkish. Not quite sure if you got the right one. That one. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. All right. So we've got that. Uh, I'm going to set up some additional lighting. So uh, create lights, point light, pull that one up and out. And actually, we're going to take this guy and we're going to lay it flat. Okay. So I'm going to hit E and I'm going to rotate this to minus 90. There we go. And let's position this on the grid. So hit W, move that down. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that thing in its entirety. So control D. We're going to move that out. <clears throat> we're going to hit E. We're going to flip it over something like that. Okay. And we're going to change the color of the helix in that one. So we're going to hit 4. We're going to zoom in. Just select our helix. Right click. Assign new material. MIA material. Presets, glass solid, replace. And let's make that one red. Like that. Okay. Okay, so we've got these two. Back to five. All right, so I was working on my lights here. Got one there, control D. I'm going to move one over here and up a little bit, something like so. Select these two lights, go to my point light shape, go down to shadows. And we're not going to use depth map shadows, we're going to use ray trace shadows. I'm going to increase this a lot, let's say 6 by 12, something like so. That looks good. In my render settings, I need to go to my quality tab to ray tracing. And I'm going to bump up these values as well. So 8, 8, and 16. No, 16. There we go. And let's say 6, 3, and 3. Okay. So I've got my image based lighting. I got my global illumination. Um, I'm going to select final gathering. Now we've got some glass going on, so I'm going to set up caustics and we're going to increase the accuracy to about 300, something like that. Okay, looks about good. Quality, we're going to increase that to, let's say, 1.5. Um, we're going to set the image size to HD 1080. And let's just give this a test render and see if we got what we were looking for. Okay, so I'm just going to set the ground plane, pull that out a little bit, and scale it out. I don't want to see my HDRI file, like so. And we still need to apply some material to that. So right click, assign new material. Let's go with the Fong E. And let's make that black. There's a risk that it's going to be too dark, but we'll find out in a sec. Okay. Just going to do a quick test render and I'll uh, pause while I'm doing that so you guys don't have to wait for that. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, um, I did a render and we need a little bit more light, so we're going to just uh, tweak that a sec. And there's one thing I wanted to add, and I'll do that right here on this uh, top section here. Uh, I want to uh, get rid of a couple of these edges here. So we're just a just 
trying to see if I can drag select that without messing everything up. So um, let's see. Um, maybe not. That's always the thing. You always want to keep on tweaking, you know, and uh, I don't want this to be overcomplicated. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit more light. I want to create an ambient light. So lights and ambient light. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to hit W and we're going to move that to the back a little bit. Pull that up. And it's really important to uh, decrease the intensity. Do 0 0.1, otherwise you can have a completely blown out scene. Okay, and we're gonna take one more light. We're gonna hit Control D, pull that down to somewhere over here. Obviously make sure that's in the scene like that. And for that one, uh, let's see what we're going to do with the settings. We're going to pull that down as well a lot. Let's say 0 0.1 as well. Okay. Okay. So this should be our final render. Something like that. Maybe tilt it a little bit. Okay. And we'll give this a go. And I'll just, uh, I won't pause the video so you guys can see how it's going to render out. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully it's not going to take forever. Yeah, sorry guys, this is going to take a while. So uh, I'll just uh, hit pause. See you guys in a sec. Hi guys, and I'm back. Well, it's a good thing I paused this render because it took almost 40 minutes to do. So, But uh, I think the end result is pretty sweet, and uh, I hope you guys like it. And... Uh, like always, make it your own, tweak it, you know, change it any way you like. Uh, hopefully this guy, this was helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching as always. Uh, if you decide to subscribe, that would be really awesome. And see you guys next time. Bye.